Hey there, what's up? My name is Collector, and in this video I want to show you my new plugin called Kick It. Now I'm aware what you're looking at is not actually a plugin, because it is a preset for FL Studio's patcher. So I know it's officially not a plugin or something, but in this video it's just easier to, to call it a plugin and then explain everything rather than calling it a patcher preset every time. I created this plugin as a one-stop shop for enhancing your hard dance kicks, as well as to create FX versions of it. So it's not really a plugin that can create kicks or something like that. This just comes in really handy if you have a finished kick and you want to give it that extra bit of power or some extra character, or you just want to create those FX versions to spice up your tracks. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks to create everything and to optimize it for the first public version, and that was mostly due to all the mapping that I had to do, because I never created such a complex patch preset before. Right now it's made with uh, stock plugins only, so that if you have a copy of FL Studio, I guarantee you can open this version and everything works. For future versions, I might include external plugins too, but I only want to do that after I have the feedback from you guys from the community so that I know what exactly I can implement. Um, so yeah, I will keep this plugin updated regularly with all the things that I could think uh, could be better and with all the input that I get from you guys. So I loaded up this kick from my free Kicktober pack and without any effects, without this plugin on it, it just sounds like this. I think it's already quite a decent kick, but let's just say that I want to enhance it by giving it a little bit more character, a little bit more power. Um, so by doing this, I will walk you through every section of the plugin and I will show you all its capabilities. I will also show you what's going on underneath the hood so that you can make uh, changes according to your personal liking or even replay certain plugins to your liking. So when you open up the plugin, it would look like this. And right now there's nothing going on. There's no processing at all. And then the first thing we see over here is the knob for the input volume. Since most kicks that I render are maximized in volume, I think it's useful to give yourself a little bit of headroom before applying all the effects. Um, so once you've, you've done all of the processing that you want, you can still bring back the input volume a little bit to match your preferred audio level. So I'll be going through everything in chronological order, so then we start with this tonal kick boost section. I often find that giving kicks a tonal boost adds a bit more of an emphasis on the punch, as well as some character in the tail. Now the kick that I'm working on, as you can see, is in G-sharp. Uh, so I have to turn on, off the bypass over here and then turn on the knob that is related to the note of my kick. So G-sharp in this case. If it, and I just have to turn it on. Now it's very low in volume, so I have to bring up the, the input a little bit. If you don't turn anything, any of these on, you won't hear anything. You have to turn on... The, the, the slider that is related to the note of your kick. So as you can see, you have a few knobs that you can tweak. And the main parameter is the big slider over here because this gives the, the resonance to the frequency belonging to this note. So without tweaking anything, it just sounds plain like this. But as soon as I move up the slider, you hear that the punch is going to cut through a little bit more. Now that might be a bit much, but it's just for you to show what this slider does. If I then show it to you inside the EQ, where it's going on, you can see that there's just a peak point being created. And as you can see, it's exactly on the frequency that the punch is. Um, so, and then it's quite self-explanatory, so the, the higher you move the slider, the, the more resonance you will get. Yeah, that's, that's way too much, but let's say if you like it, you can do it. Uh, you also have the possibility to, to move the slider down. So let's say that you want to layer this kick with another punch, for example, and you just want to reduce the punch of this one a little bit. Um, all you have to do is turn down the slider and it will there will be less emphasis on this punch, so you can easily layer it with other ones, for example. Now, another knob that you have down here is the slope, and this basically adjusts the, the, 
the width of the, the frequency band. I recommend you to be a little bit more gentle with it because yeah, if you if you turn it up too much, you're not just affecting the, the frequency from the punch, but everything in total. And then another thing that you have over here is a plus one button. What this does, it allows you to move this frequency point up with one octave. So if we take it on, it's going over there. Because um, I've analyzed a lot of kicks, and for most hardstyle and raw style kicks at least, the, the fundamental frequency of the punch is somewhere in this mid region. Sometimes they go in the low mid, sometimes they go in the high mid. But in general, I think like 90% of the kicks have their fundamental frequency of the punch in this mid region. So it could be that it's not always on, 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 on this, this frequency, but that it's, um, that it's simply an octave up. So then you just have to take on this one and you go into the upper octave. Um, and you just have to try which one fits for your kick, where exactly the punch, the, the fundamental frequency for your punch is. So for now, I will just um, put it back here and give it a little bit of a tonal boost. So yeah, that's what, uh, what we'll be working with for now. It could be that your punch is not in the same note as your tail because the, the, if you give um if you label your kicks you mostly label it to the to the key of the tail the punch is not always in the same note in that case you could also turn on multiple um notes in here and adjust them accordingly so let's say your tail is in g sharp but my punch was maybe like let's say in in, in c sharp then you can turn the c sharp on as well and play around with that to, to match the sound of the punch to enhance the punch and then you can leave the g-sharp to enhance the tail now it's not very precise but in future updates i am planning on um, allowing you to adjust the punch and the tail separately so let's have a look then on how you can create those fx kick versions of your kick you can apply multiple effects like this FX kick section here, reverb, delay, saturation and distortion, and a filter. But let's start out with this FX kick. This parameter over here is connected to the Froti EQ. And if I adjust this parameter, you see what it does inside the EQ over here. And this is useful to create those small fixed versions of your kicks that you often hear right before a drop or in kick rolls, etc. And it's just a thing of trial and error. You have to, to see how it affects your kick, what it does to your kick. Um, just play around with it. And what I recommend you to do then is to just record multiple versions, save them in a folder. Um, like just create like 10, 20, 30 different versions of your kick, put them in the same folder. So whenever you're working on a project, you have a huge library of your kicks ready to be dropped in your track. Now you have um, the intensity knob here, which basically just adjusts the width of your frequency band. So of course, like the higher you turn it up, the, the wider it gets. And then you have a slider here to mix in the wet signal with the dry signal. So right now it's not affecting anything, but the more I turn this up, the more effect you will hear. <laughs> So just like that, you can very easily create different effects versions of your kick. And if you've then found a sweet spot, you can move on to the reverb and delay section. Now it's quite self-explanatory. Um, these can be really useful if you want to create an FX kick that you can play right after your drop, for example, and that is leading into the next part of your track. Um, and I gave some control over the decay time and the room size for the reverb and some the parameters for the time and the feedback on the delay side. And then you have two mix knobs to actually blend in the signal with, um, with the original kick. So 
let's add some reverb and let's add some delay So just like that, you have to adjust it a little bit to your to your liking, and then you can create it those nice fade out effects kicks. And then next up, we have the saturation and distortion. Uh, for now, you don't have so much control over these because I found them not so important, um, especially since you're applying this effect on the complete kick. And yeah, most hardstyle and raw style kicks are already distorted a lot. Um, but sometimes with the effects kick section, it's nice to add a little bit more saturation and distortion. You just can add a little bit more of a dynamic sound, especially in the, in the tail, and it could be nice to fill up your drops. Then over here, we have a section for the filter, and this one is linked to another equalizer, which is this one. And um, you have to, if you want to, to apply it, you have to turn it on. Because right now, like if you turn it on, you already hear a small low cut and a small high cut. So that's the reason why on, on standard it's turned off. But if you then just adjust the, the low cut and the high cut, you can basically create any form of a low cut kick or high cut kick or even a band pass filter. This could sound like this. And again, this could be useful to, to spice up your drops or your mid intros or whatsoever. Um, right now you don't have so much control over it, but for future updates, I'm planning on um, giving you control over the the slope of this filter, as well as the resonant of the filter. So you can even create more versions of it. And the next section we have is the compression, which is again quite self-explanatory, um, because after a lot of processing, you might just want to glue everything a little bit together and, and make it sound more cohesive again. Um, and therefore it gave you control over the threshold, the ratio, and even some makeup gain. So you can, with this compression, you can also easily adjust um, the volume again to your liking. And then the last section is actually one of my favorites. This is an Oxford inflator style boosting. Um, you could call it a limiter, but it's actually the limiter since it's simply just a bunch of wave shaping going on. Um, if you've seen my video where I create a hard summit intro, you know that I really like to use this on um, my kick buses. And I've taken this concept from Frank Ball's Patcher preset where he's imitating the Sonox Oxford inflator. I will leave a link down to his video below. You can download his um, Patcher preset for free. And he basically explains what's going on underneath the hood of the real one. And like I said, he's uh, simulating that in, um, in the patcher. And I've taken that concept and put it in here because it is so powerful to put it on kicks because you can increase the power, the overall power of the kick so much. Um, so let me show you how, how, um, how that affects the kick. It makes it so much more powerful without actually increasing the, the peak value. So I think this is really powerful to, to create, to give your kick that extra boost that it might need to make it like really slam in your face basically. So what I then want to show you is what exactly is going on underneath the hood. So how the mapping of this thing works, because giving you the plugin is one, but it could be more powerful if you can make your own changes to it and understand how everything works underneath. So this complete section is to make the tonal boost that we've seen in the beginning. Every note basically has their own equalizer that is related to the, um, to the frequency of that note. And you could replace this with another equalizer if you like, but then you would have to do a lot of the mapping of the, the knobs again. So this might be a little bit tricky, but you could do it if you want. Um, 
over here this, these these um, fruity gains are just to uh, adjust the, the input volume um, and then the signal goes into this um, fruity gain which is allowing you to, to bypass this total kick boost section then everything goes into the effects section that we saw over here you could adjust that to your liking again and it's going through um, two different fruity gains this is basically the dry signal and this is basically the wet signal um, and i did that to have this slider of the dry and wet so you can actually fade it in um, nice and even um, and then from here the signal goes into a wave shaper for some distortion a blood overdrive for some saturation the fruity reverb 2 for the reverb the delay bank for the delay and you can yeah if you want you can of course replace these plugins with your own plugins or you can make adjustments in here um, let's say you want uh, more size or um, yeah whatever low cut high cut you can adjust everything in here to your liking um, then we go into the the EQ for the filter this one you could also replace or make adjustments just how you want and this signal goes again into the fruity gains for the dry and wet signal compression over here you can adjust it if you want uh, or replace it with another plugin uh, that signal goes into the another fruity gain over here and that's going into the out and but there's also a signal going in here these three wave shapers for the oxford inflator style boosting um, so that's in very short what is going on under the hood and and um yeah how that the process goes and then where it flows etc it might look a little bit complex but it's actually easier than than you think um so i can re recommend you to just dive in here and maybe make some changes according to your liking and replace plugins so that it works better for you so that is pretty much it for the first version of this plugin uh, as i've shown you now it can be so helpful in creating those better and a little bit more enhanced versions of your kick and even turning them into fx kicks for spicing up your tracks now i leave the download link for this plugin down below in the description as always but i would also love to hear what you guys think of this plugin um, so if you have any comments on how i could improve this or what you're missing or what you think is too much whatever it is please leave the comments down below in the comment section so i can improve the plugin with all your feedback and then i would say thanks for watching and Hope to see you in the next video.